Hi, my name is Laura Greenfield, and this is my first solo television show. You may or may not have seen me on uh, John Francois' uh, A Moment, not A Moment in Time. I forgot the name. Sorry, John. Anyway, I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. Um, this show is called Show and Tell, and the reason I wanted to do it was to share some of my passions with you. Uh, two of them are writing and the tarot cards, and they kind of go together. Uh, I first got into writing when I was probably a child in my uh, little diaries that my mom gave to me, the little five-year one with a little key and lock on it. And ever since then, I've been writing forever, and now I can't not write. Um, I've got a master's in professional writing. I do a lot of different types. A lot of what I do the most right now are still journaling as well as poetry. I also do editing and um, writing coaching and things like that too. What I came to the conclusion of is the reason I do it is to get to know myself. It's not as much to say things or um, tell people necessarily about me per se, but it's to get to know myself. Um, I've always been attracted to the ancient Greeks and as Socrates said, know thyself, as well as the unexamined life is not worth living. I don't know if I would go that far as not worth living, but it's not as pleasant, I don't think. Um, so it really just hit me this morning that those are the, those are the principles behind uh, what I do. I am a very reflective person, and I like sharing that with people. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. That's why I have notes. Thank you. Anyway, um, yeah, poetry I got into when I was in my master's program. I'd never written anything before. Um, earlier in undergraduate degree, I had a class that uh, first taught me about Langston Hughes. I loved him. I heard the rhythm in his words, and we literally heard an album of him reciting his poetry with blues playing in the background, and I was hooked. I broke down in tears. It, it just got to me emotionally. I don't have near the talent nor the, well, I have the rhythm, but only in dancing. But uh, that really got me started, and it just got me thinking of poetry. My poetry is, is very personal. It is, it, it's not frou-frou, I call it. It's not romantic. It, uh, it just doesn't have that charm, but it always tells about me or it tells about something that I've seen or experienced um, along the way. So I brought a few of them with me, and um, that may explain a lot of things. Um, I wrote most of these a while back in school. Um, I've been writing now still, but not to the same degree. It's some kind of mixture of poetry and journaling. I haven't figured out a name for that yet, but I will. This one is called Watching the View. As I found out, actually it's gonna be Whoopi Goldberg's like 10th or 20th anniversary on that. Go girl. Uh, this one I just happened to see one day and uh, wrote this down after the experience. What are you obsessed with? One hostess asks the famous visiting actress. Organization, she answers. I need tissue paper between cashmere, she explains. I look at the cigarette ashes on my floor and the clutter of paper on my kitchen counters, and I feel like Oscar Madison incarnate. I don't smoke anymore. Don't worry. Um, that's kind of an example of uh, just a moment in time in my life. Uh, I tend to be very sarcastic. I can be... Well, I guess political at times even. Um, I'm trying not to right now these days. Um, this one is probably one of my favorites. Again, it was a while back, but we'll all know why later. Uh, this is called PMS. I could kill my dogs. I can just picture throwing their little wiener bodies against the wall and watching them drop limply to the floor. I just want them to stop barking. There are two new red boxers living in a pen behind us. They came into our yard, poking their uninvited noses around my doggy door, trying to get at my miniature dachshunds. We're all still pissed. Watching this territorial struggle got me thinking about my recent visit to Palant Hollywood. 
I could barely eat while being bombarded with montages of blockbuster movie clips coming at me from multiple monitors blaring in Dolby surround sound. Each explosion brought me one step closer to heartburn. As Jean-Claude Van Damme drop-kicked his way to Mortal Kombat victory, I wailed to my husband that as long as testosterone-based values were ruling this country, no one was saved. Mm. This was a long time ago. And here I am today, currently contemplating the destruction of my normally precious puppies. At least I know my insanity is truly temporary. I know what time of the month it is. I call a friend to lament my own descent into primal rage. She tells me of a teacher who taught that a premenstrual woman is hormonally closer to a male than at any other time during her cycle. That would explain a lot. I thank the man for being patient with me on that one. I'm not married anymore either, so many things have changed. I also do a lot of um, tributes to the people I love. I do, I have done birthday poems for friends, um, for relatives. Um, these two are my favorites. Um, my mom, who is no longer here, got me into reading and writing in the first place. And this is called My Books for Mom. There was a time when if you'd asked me, what items would you struggle to save in the event of a natural disaster? I would have said, without hesitation, the photo albums. I think many, if not most people, would answer the same way. Pictures are our stories, frozen visually in time. But recently I've done some contemplating, and now I would have to say that my books have become my most valued possessions. I scan through the titles, neatly lined up on my bookshelves, noticing the many different subjects and literary flavors and I see the history of my life based upon the titles of the books that I've bought over the years. I don't care to rent, I prefer to own my books, mainly trade paperbacks. I love to see, smell, and touch my books in my home. I love to flip through the pages, scan the table of contents, and read about the authors. Feels like literary foreplay. While I have not read every word of every book I own, I have read at least some of all of them and each one holds a story of my life outside the cover, which connects me to the contents in its pages. I have my mother to thank for taking me to the library and introducing me to a love for books at a very young age. It was her good foresight which ignited my passion and wonderment of the power and magic of the written word. Now it means even more to me with the advent of computers and this and that and screens. I still like paper. Um, this last one, I think, is my favorite. Um, this was the second one that I'd written in a class, and I was terrified to read it. Each time we wrote a poem each week, we had to read it to the class and get feedback on it. Um, and this one was different. This one, we were not reading them. We had to pass them over to the person sitting next to us and let them read it. And I was sitting next to a guy who was very vocal, to say the least, very sarcastic, very, uh, I don't even know, just very smart ass for lack of a better word. And I shivered as I gave it to him. It's called a uh, man of mitzvahs for Papa, who was my grandfather. And today is, it was his birthday. He was wearing light blue pajamas and an IV the last time I saw him. Wimbledon was on TV. I've never seen him in bed before. I'll write to you, I said, taking his warm, weak hand into mine. Tears fell down his cheek as I released him and left the room. Thank God I'd saved the letters. For years, among the standard stacks of demanding windowed envelopes, the, st the sight of his warm company logo stood out as a gift. Inside, along with the latest updates of family news, were tales of wisdom and courage from the pages of ancient Jewish history. He shared with me stories of the covenant of Abraham and the dictums of Hillel, which reminded me that I was not alone and that there was strength in love and relationships. With words of encouragement, love and a big hug to number one, he'd write, I was the eldest of 10 grandchildren. He'd sign off until the next time. God, I miss the letters.
and that was uh, 20 years ago now. But that's still my favorite. So the idea behind writing, at least for me, and that I like to share with others, um, is that it doesn't have to be good. Um, you just have to say something and just say what's in there. And uh, I'm putting it out there now for anyone who sees this. I'm considering uh, starting a writing group. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to write. We're just going to do it and share it. And I do that with friends at times, too. And um, I just think it's really valuable. And um, it's just really positive for even yourself. Even if you don't want to do that, just write in your journal. Just write, 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 write. And find out what you think. Writing isn't about uh, saying what you know. It's about finding out what you know and what you think. Um, and that's what I learned, not in school, but by myself. Uh, I'm going to flip now into um, the tarot cards and why they have something to do with writing. Um, I write all the time. I do the cards. I've been doing them for about 20 years now. And I look at them um, as storytelling and not fortune telling. I know a lot of people, they hear the word and they get frightened. Um, I, I don't try and predict what's going to happen. Um, I wouldn't want to know. Um, I use them typically for guidance um, if I'm confused and just to see where, am I, where I'm at. Um, the deck consists of 56 cards. There are 22 which really tell you the whole um, life cycle. And that's really what it's about. It's about showing the life cycle. It's about starting out in the beginning. The one card is the, I'm not going to take them out now because it's just too annoying. Um, and getting to mastery of the world. And when you've got that, you're going to be going through again because you're here long enough. And then um, there are just all different areas of life. There are, they come from the, um, the deck of cards, the regular deck of cards. Only instead of your spades, clubs, diamonds, um, and whatever I'm forgetting, and hearts, um, we have the um, uh, wands, swords, uh, da -da -da, cups, and uh, I forgot something again. It's probably the same one. I'll let you know when I come up with it. Anyway, um, again, all different areas of life, feelings and um, thoughts, um, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to do this now, but anyway, um, my point was that the more I started doing them, the more I just started making sense of my own life. And, and I was just surprised at when things would come up. I don't do a whole spread. Many people, most people probably do a whole, what they call a Celtic cross. And that involves 10 cards. Um, that just doesn't work for me. I just make it very simple. Keep it simple. That works for me. Um, and I may just do one card to see, um, okay, what's up for the day? What, what, tell me what I should know, you know, give me some guidance here, especially if I'm feeling confused about something or terrified about something as in doing this show, which I was and still am. Um, it was Eleanor Roosevelt that said, you must do the thing you fear. So here I am. And my mom was named after Eleanor Roosevelt, but anyway, um, I keep a notebook for that that I didn't put in front of me. I was going to. But I write down whatever I've gotten. If I don't do one card, I, do a th I just do a quick three card, which I do past, present, future. And I know that sounds like um, predicting, but it kind of isn't. It's just a very quick da da da. I just call it a bam spread. <laughs> um, and it just helps me gain some. I'll just say something. Something, I'm very intuitive about it. I don't um, necessarily read books or whatever about saying this is what this means, this is what this means. Um, I'll give you an example. This is what I chose when I was concerned about, um, oops, I'm not sure exactly where I'm thinking, oops, um, about doing the show. This is the number seven, it's the chariot. And when I say read it, I'm reading the picture. Number one, the first thing I notice is the number and what the number seven means. Um, it's always been a nice number for me. It depends. Everybody's got different thoughts about numerology. Um, 
seven to me has to do with spirituality. Um, and here we have uh, the person driving, well, driving the chariot with no reins um, and is driving the two sphinxes. So this to me is obvious. It's the black and the white. It's just like a yin, yin and yang. And it, it shows balance. Um, and so we're, with no reins, it's not a physical act. So that's just like this. Um, for me, it's not a physical act. It's just driving intuitively um, like I'm doing now. I really don't have a script. I tried to put some notes down, but it didn't really work for me, um, which is why I may be hesitating at first. But the canopy shows the um, stars over a blue sky, which to me comes from like moon energy, nighttime energy, which again is, is more intuitive and that's more female energy. The um, sun being more male energy. Um, I see a lot of yellow, yellow coming from, if you know anything about chakras, we can talk about that at another time. That's something I'm interested in. Um, that comes from your third one having to do with inner strength. Um, that's kind of, yeah, well, that's the bottom line. That's what I got from here. So when I first chose it and I was being so afraid of coming here and doing this, uh, when I first turned it over, the words that came to my mind were, well, besides just do it, was, um, you're ready. Just go. Just go for it. I was still terrified, but I still felt like, yeah, I know. I know I'm supposed to do it. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm also sweating. Um, let me think of another one. Oh, I didn't bring it because I didn't have my notebook. But anyway, um, so that just works for me, and that just gives me some kind of a, okay, that's nice. And then I may write about it. And I do. I keep them in a notebook. I write down what I, what I got for the day. Um, and I don't do it every day, but I do it a lot. If there's a particular issue, i.e. this show, I'll do it. Um, whatever. Whatever's coming up. So I like that together. And, and again, that being a story, it just connects with writing. And I do put it together. And sometimes um, uh, I may write something about that card. Not just what I got, but, you know, what it is, what a story behind it. I'll just make something up. Um, I have thought for a long time about how I have a book in the back of my head, but I don't want to tell you about it because <laughs> I don't know yet. Um, but there's a thought about, about the tarot and maybe using, using each card for a certain part of life because that's really what it is. And, and that the... Words have gotten maybe cliche, but like the Lion King circle of life thing, that's really what it is. So I like that. So I do like to do them for people, if anybody's interested. Um, anyway, um, those two are my two uh, primary passions at the moment, which are writing and tarot. And I would love to share them with anybody else if you have similar interests. Um, I'm always interested in getting groups together. They're nice, to, they're nice to do together as opposed to just by yourself. So again, my name is Laura Greenfield, and I want to thank you for watching this today.